The home of golf, St Andrews, clearly appreciates that more than most. Even the old course, with its 600 years of tradition, now has a new irrigation system. At the end of the day, an experienced greenkeeper goes out onto his golf green and he will look at it and in five minutes he'll say, I need to irrigate tonight. Uh, and he will decide how much water to put on. We can't take that experience away. What we're trying to do is to work alongside that experience and put in methods of, of, of weather stations and measurements of soil moistures that allow him to perhaps decide a little bit better and a little bit more accurately how much water to apply. Most current systems have the same basic components. The water, whatever the source or supply, is fed into a storage tank, through the pump, into the underground network of pipes and onto the course, greens, tees, approaches and sometimes fairways, through the strategically positioned sprinklers. Automatic systems have electronic and computerised controls and are often linked to on-course weather and measuring stations. One of the advantages with modern irrigation systems is you can now have a thing called individual head control where each individual sprinkler can be turned on for its own particular length of time. This coupled with computer controls means that you can put many programs into the controller, you can put the water on at exactly the right rate of, uh, of, of application so that it soaks into the soil, it doesn't run off the top, and you can vary the amount of water going on different areas of the green or indeed the fairway. If you've got fairway irrigation, you may want less water on the right-hand side of the fairway than the left-hand side of the fairway if there's a slope on the grass. So you, with modern control systems, you can do this. The advance in irrigation over the years has been on control rather than anywhere else, although there has been a tremendous advance also in the underground services with new pipe work that now lasts 30 to 50 years, good cable. That's as important as the sprinklers control system, perhaps more important. Sprinklers have got better, but the big advance has been in control systems. Now linking those control systems to things like automatic weather stations so that you know what is happening, how much rainfall you're having, what the evapotranspiration rate is, linking that again to looking at the water and moisture content in the soil. This is all part of establishing how much water you need to apply to that particular bit of grass in order to make it grow properly. I think if you have a system that is designed properly, uh, and, and this is very important, you've got to have the sprinkler spaced at the right space and you've got to have the pipe work of the right size, so your initial design and installation of the system is very important, but having got all of that right and having got the system working, the modern systems are very user friendly uh, and will allow you to do all sorts of things you weren't able to do in the, in the past. In looking forward, you've got to think of systems that are going to last a long time as well, which is something which is happening with the modern materials. Uh, plastics and polyethylenes and all these sort of things, they're far better than they used to be in the past. Even without considering the effects from pressure variations, wind speed and land slopes, the rotary heads of the sprinklers do not distribute the water in equal measure. Generally, water distribution is fairly uniform, up to about 65% of the diameter, and then reduces to almost nothing at the outer fringes. Hardly surprising, the inner 10-foot circle covers approximately 300 square feet, whereas the most extreme 10-foot circle accounts for 10 times that land area, about 3,000 square feet. With modern systems, um, so where in perhaps you're irrigating uh, fairways, which is a large area, if you get high wind speeds and you've got a weather station on the site and the right sort of software on the control system, it'll shut down, say, the fairways, because it's just a waste of water, but they'll still irrigate the greens. It's divided into different programs. Um, you adapt, as far as you can, the spacings to suit a particular area if you're on a links course where you expect a bit of wind. Uh, in particular areas, you might bring sprinklers closer together to help counteract the effect of wind. And the type of spacing that you use, I mean triangular spacings are generally more uniform um, and react better um, than, than square spacings do. Um, that's, a, that's a general rule. So there are a limited number of things you can do. You can have low angle sprinklers on tees and that sort of thing. But get, basically if you get high winds you can't really irrigate effectively. You can't. Um, and I don't think the UK is any worse than anywhere else. There, there, there are tables that you use for um, wind speeds and sprinkler spacings, but there's a limit to what you can do. Uh, weather station is very important because it gives you consistent information on rainfall, on evapotranspiration, uh, which are the two key factors in looking at irrigation. Uh, and you can only really get it from a good on-site weather station. Forecasting is something which is very important. Uh, we always tend to look in hindsight and say, what has happened the previous day? How much rain have we had? How much has the evapotranspiration rate been? 
But if you can also forecast forward and the forecast says you're going to have rain tomorrow, then you don't want to irrigate because, uh, uh, you know, you're just putting on too much water. If the forecast is, is good and it says it's going to be very dry for the next few weeks, then you can adjust your irrigation regime. So looking at the forecast is probably just as important as looking at what has happened over the past few weeks anyway. On, say, on 36 holes on the bigger cause, it sort of half a million pounds upwards. It's, it's not cheap, and it seems crazy to me that uh, sometimes golf club committees contemplate that sort of expenditure without really going into the means of realising the full, in, the full results of that, that, that sort of investment, what it could actually do for them if they got to grips with it. You can't blame the irrigation system if it's badly managed or inappropriately managed for a particular type of course, then you're not going to get the, the, the right results and you're going to run into health problems for the course. Um, places like Temple have, have done a great deal, I think, in, in showing that proper management of courses and, and proper management of their irrigation um, um, does produce real benefits for the golfer. If only the golfer would have the patience to let people get the courses sorted out. Another major benefit of a computerised system is the easy ability to compile detailed and accurate year-on-year -year statistics. If you keep records of things like water balance sheet of, of how much rainfall you're having, how much evapotranspiration there is, how much irrigation water you're putting on, these all add to the inf information that is available to the head green people or the course manager in deciding how much water to apply. It doesn't replace them at all. It works alongside it. Uh, and and, and it, particularly, the more information you have, the more accurate you can be. And what's more important is you can if you keep the records, you can then start comparing last year with the year before with the year before and say, well, this is the similar sort of weather we had two years ago and we were only applying this amount of water or we had to apply more water or we, we only applied it every fourth day or whatever. And it's only by looking at the records instead of trying to remember things uh, uh, that would be the benefit. And what we want to start doing over the next year is to start imposing different levels of drought stress on some of these plots to see the reaction, to give us much greater uh, knowledge of how roots r respond to different uh, moisture levels, and that will always help uh, greenkeepers in terms of their subsequent management of turf grass areas. The storm clouds may be gathering, but with the right approach and attitude to irrigation, golf has a bright future. The storage is the way forward, as I see it, recycling of grey water, uh, second-hand water, you know, water you've actually used, that's either going to be discharged into the sewer or be discharged to um, soak away or discharged back into the river. Uh, essentially, it's, it's using it again um, for non-portable purposes and irrigation is ideal. It's in golf's best interest to manage the environment properly. Uh, they've got to stick with uh, the legislation. And in terms of the, the, the PR value of being seen to be green, it's, it's something they can't afford to ignore. People are looking at water now as a resource rather than something you can just splash on at any, any time. Irrigation systems are tools like any other tool, like, like tractors and, and, uh, and rakes and strimmers. It's yet another tool in the toolbox. but. It's a tool that's got to be used wisely, and it's the knowledge and skills of the greenkeepers that help them to do just that. I know it seems a long time ago now, but we have had a drought situation where we've had people protesting to us who've walked by and seen our irrigation systems going, saying, hang on a minute, people haven't got enough to drink. What are you doing putting that on the grass? And it'll happen to us all. You know, it's, uh, they'll come along knocking at the golf door. They'll, they'll knock on their MP's door. You've got to be able to say, well, look, this is not water designated for people to drink. This is water we've collected. This is water that's not fit for human consumption. But it is fit for giving us a, a brilliant surface to play golf on. <laughs>